service begins this morning on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us... Uh, turn in the uh, prayer book to our canticle this morning, which we will cite in place of, of the uh, Glory in Excelsis. It's canticle number 10, which you'll find on page 86 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us say together, Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. Seek ye the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow fall from the heavens and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing, bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Call your attention, as, as we always do, to the announcements on the back of the, the bulletin, uh, particularly the last announcement there about the room at the end this morning. If, uh, if you can and, and would uh, volunteer to help with, on July the 25th, uh, our, our chairperson, Tom Dunnan, would appreciate your help with that. The other thing, I understand we have someone who's celebrating a birthday today, so we wish a happy birthday to Jack Barnes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Are there other announcements that need to be made this morning? We, our, our vestry meets uh, uh, this week on Thursday. Those, those of you on the vestry, if you need a reminder of that. Now, our service continues with the readings from the Word of God. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. 
It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is taken from Psalms, Psalm 65. Let us read responsively at the asterisk. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall fowls be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their treasures. Our sins are stronger than we are but you will blot them out. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas. The roaring of the waves and the of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dust to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You crown the year with your goodness. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second reading is from Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the, the, the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen.
according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed, some seeds fell on the ground, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, for they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what is sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what is sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord grant his blessing. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and fittingly proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In our service today, <coughs> uh, for the hymn in place of the glory in excelsis, we recited the morning prayer canticle uh, from Isaiah 55, 6 through 11, part of which was in the first reading also this morning. I repeat part of it again. Turn to the Lord who shows mercy, to God who richly pardons us, for thoughts of mine are not like your thoughts, nor are your ways mine, the Lord said thus. When rain and snow fall from above, they don't return. Earth watering to bring forth life and to give growth as sown seeds yield bread for eating. So my word goes forth from my mouth, returning not to me empty. It will fulfill my heart's desire and flourish in what pleases me. We all know how seeds grow into plants. Into plants which in turn produce more seeds. We know how Jesus compared faith to a mustard seed. In our gospel reading today, Jesus compares the word of God to seed. And our hymn before the gospel began with the verse, Almighty God, your word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruits abound. Our gospel lesson this morning is the parable of the sower, in which Jesus explains how seeds may develop or not develop, depending on the condition of the soil in which they're sown. And so it is with the word of God. Jesus said, listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Jesus explains this, saying, 
When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. Jesus' parable continues, other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Jesus explains, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. Jesus' parable continues, other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. This, Jesus explains, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lures of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. Finally, Jesus' parable concludes, other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain. And Jesus explains this, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, comprehends it, adheres to it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold in another 60 and in another 30. Jesus teaches us in the parable of the good sower that the spread of the word of God may be and often is hindered by circumstances in this world. The world resists the word of God and being converted to Christ. But thanks be to God that those who are persistent and faithful are successful in overcoming the world. Like seeds sown on good ground, they hear and comprehend, adhere to, understand the word of God and produce lasting results. Some abundantly and some less than some others. We may be grateful for the devotion and endurance of all of them, yet what matters most is the success of the Word of God. We are Jesus' disciples. It is up to us to sow the Word of God, to plant the seed on good ground, to promote the growth of the knowledge of the kingdom, the reign of peace and righteousness. This is a huge task and responsibility that has been given to us. We are stewards of the seed and stewards of the ground. Both the seed and the ground are in our hands. What will we do with them? How will we plant the seed and till the ground? How will we plan and prepare to expand our witness in our mission field here? How will this church, the Episcopal Church of the Ascension, spread God's word? If we think in terms of planning and preparing for growth, we are beginning to think now of where or what we hope this church will be or become in the years ahead. To get there, we need to begin thinking now about what we will need to do to get there. This is a process of long-range planning, establishing goals and setting objectives to reach our goals. We can think of goals to be set as seeds to be planted. We are indeed blessed with the assets and means to do much more than we are currently doing. 
We heard Jesus say today that the seed is sown on the good ground which brought forth grain, and that is the one that hears the word and understands it and bears fruit. Consider this. To foster understanding, we need to develop and offer education classes for our members and prospective new members. Is this a seed to be planted? Consider this. It would be advantageous to schedule opportunities at other than our Sunday worship service time. Our time is a gift that we can give to God. Is this a seed to be planted? Consider this. If our strategy is to attract new members from outlying communities in nearby counties, scheduling activities in some locations there would be advantageous. Is this a seed to be planted? Consider this. We have an ecumenical partner in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, ELCA. Perhaps we could do more to encourage Lutherans in our area to join with us. Is this a seed to be planted? Consider this. We are a small congregation, but we belong to the larger church. We are part of the Episcopal Church, which is part of the Worldwide Anglican Communion, which is the third largest Christian affiliation. Together with other Christians, we are participating in ecumenical fellowship of the World Council of Churches. And we confess in our creeds that we belong to the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We need to produce and publish a newsletter with news of the concerns of all Christians around the world. Is this a seed to be planted? These are some things for us to consider. Providing education, expanding our schedule, committing more of our time, venturing out to surrounding communities, encouraging ecumenical partnerships, and sharing the concerns of all Christians. And these things are only a few ideas to promote growth. They promote increasing our numbers as well as expanding our activities and programs. Now finally, we must acknowledge we are not perfect, nor can we expect or demand perfection. In this season, our epistle lessons have been from the epistle of Paul to the Romans. The apostle Paul gives us an honest and humble assessment of himself. He says, I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. Wretched man that I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul encourages us saying, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the Spirit that dwells in you. Imperfect as we are, we are baptized into the ranks of Christ's faithful soldiers and servants and are led 
by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, Whoever gives these a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will be disregarded. Quoting from Isaiah, we can find much encouragement in the testimony of the Lord, who will direct our ways. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. <laughs> or said another way, so my word goes forth from my mouth, returning not to me empty. It will fulfill my heart's desire and flourish in what pleases me. And now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The Nicene Creed is found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers are found beginning on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your Son's name, we pray that you will mercifully incline your ear to us who have now made our prayers unto you, and grant that those things which we have asked faithfully according to your will may be attained to the relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the nation, and all the world peace and concord, and to us and all your servants eternal life in your heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Using the form found on page 360 of the prayer book, before they are kneeling or sitting or able, let us confess our sins against God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and you God for our dignity. Not by what we have done and not by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We learn to be sorry and be mild with the For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have no mercy on us. God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offered his sacrifice unto God. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your cross. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and life.
what we present on your altar may be used for your glory, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the work of the ministry, for the welfare of the saints, for the establishment of your truth and virtue, for the sake and by the grace of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the door of your eternity. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 